Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to my assembly. Today, we're going to look at a wonderful example of maths in the real world. Uh, more specifically, maths found in nature. You were probably thinking, hang on, maths can't exist in nature. Maths just exists in the classroom. But you will be very wrong. And I'm going to show you a great example of this. So I'm going to just share this screen first. So hopefully it will come up soon. And let's have a look at it. Anyone know who this person is? Well, if you do, I'm very impressed. He's actually called Fibonacci. Now, some of you may know who he is and know what he's really famous for. Um, he's really famous for his sequence, which is a number pattern. And if you look at the numbers at the top, these are all the numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. Um, and if you look around, if you look at these numbers, you should be able to see a pattern emerging. Can anyone see what the pattern is? How does it go from one number to the next? Well, I'll show you. If you take the first two numbers and add them up, you get the answer, which is the third number. If you then take the second and third number and add those up, you get the answer to the fourth number. And you'll see that this carries on all the way right past the bigger numbers, all the way to the very last number in this example. But it does go on forever and ever. And let's see how this number sequence can be found in nature. Let's look at this flower. How many petals does it have? One. That's on the Fibonacci sequence. Look at these flowers. Look at the petals. How many on each flower? Two. That's on the Fibonacci sequence. Look at these flowers. I guess we can all work out that the answer to this is three. Now, am I going to show you four next? Nope. I'm going to show you the next number in the Fibonacci sequence, which is five. What about these ones? Can you think of the next number in the Fibonacci sequence? Do we think these flowers have got that amount of petals? You're correct. They've got eight. The next number? 13. And the next number in the sequence? If you were to count these on a daisy, it would give you 21. What about these ones? How many, um, how many petals on here? 34 or so Fibonacci number. And the final one, I'm not going to pause and let you count. You'll be there all day. But these have got 55 petals. What about this banana? This is split into how many parts? Three parts. That number three is on the Fibonacci sequence. What about an apple? How many segments would you get? Five. What about pineapples? Look at the structure. There's five, then there's eight, then there's 13. So these are all numbers on the Fibonacci sequence that we see in nature. Look at this penguin. The structure of this penguin is in the order of the numbers uh, of the Fibonacci sequence. Who here plays the piano? Well, look at the black keys and the white keys. The ratio or the numbers are all based on the Fibonacci sequence. So you can see a pattern here, even the same with a finger. Look at that. The lengths of the different parts are all based on the number sequence. Um, so let's now look at this. This is where I'm going to be drawing live. This is where things could go wrong. So please don't laugh if it does. OK. I'm going to use the number numbers on the sequence now, and I'm going to draw some squares. So can you remember the first number on the Fibonacci sequence? It is one. I'm going to take one as being the sides of a square. OK, so that's my one sided. I'm going to do another one because obviously one is the Second number of the Fibonacci sequence. Now, can you remember the third number in the sequence? It is two. 
So I'm going to draw a square that is two squares in length or sides. Uh, let's write two there. Now, the next number in the sequence is three. Now, I apologize in advance if these aren't very good squares, but I'm still not very used to writing on a computer. Now, what's the next number? Can you remember? One, one, two, three, add the last two numbers and you get five. So I'm going to draw a square which has sides of five. Oops, that wasn't very well drawn, was it? There we go, we'll call that five. Now, the next one, add the last two numbers, three and five, and you get eight. So I'm going to draw a square with sides of eight. Okay, next one. Eight plus five, 13. So I'm going to draw now a big square of 13. There we go. Oops. Okay, so that's 13. And I'm going to draw one more. Can you remember the last number here? 8 plus 13, 21. Now, apologies, my computer doesn't like a part of my screen, so you'll see that it doesn't actually write anything. The children in my class will know all about that. A little gap there. And that's 21. Okay, you might be wondering why am I doing this? Well, here is the really interesting thing. Now, I'm going to start off with the lowest number on my sequence, which is one, and I'm going to start just in the middle of it, okay, here, and I'm going to go from the bottom right up to the top left in a curve, something like that. Now, I'm going to do the same with my two, so bottom left, curve to the top right. And again with my three, top left, bottom right. And I'm going to go all the way through five, through eight, through 13. There we go, there's that bad part of my computer. And finally down to the bottom right of 21. And what do you see here? We have a spiral okay this is a very important shape now if i go back to pictures of uh, nature so let's just get back um i want to get out of that so and let's try and do another one which is here right now let's have a look at this that spiral I drew, well, can you believe it? If you were to look up at the galaxy, you would see that it's in a spiral, the same shape as I drew using the Fibonacci numbers. That's the galaxy. Even a hurricane or a storm uses the same spiral. Even roses are formed in the same way. We'll come back to that. What about a shell? Who knows what this is? I'm sure you would have guessed it's a microscopic photo of an ovary in an anglerfish. Uses the same spiral. It's a millipede. Even the formation of a wave. Even the continents or continental drift. Even your ear uses the same spiral from the numbers in the Fibonacci sequence, and a snail, look at the snail shell. Even water spray from the elephant, and finally even a building. Now, you might want to know, why do we see this spiral in nature? How does it exist? Well, take this sunflower as an example. Sunflowers grow new cells in spirals. Look at the patterns on this you see the spiral effect. Now this spiral happens naturally in nature because 
each new cell is formed after a turn or a rotation. So a new cell is, is, is formed, then it turns or rotates, and then another cell is formed, then it turns and rotates, and so on. So if you were a plant, how much of a turn do you think you'd want between forming new cells? Well, if you don't turn at all, you're just going to go in a straight line. So these are the cells being formed in a straight line. There's no turn. If you were to, say, turn halfway, you'll see that they go away from each other in an opposite direction. If you were the forms and you were going to, if you were the, if you were the cells and you were going to uh, form your cells by turning a third, you get this pattern. Sorry if you see me in the background there. And you notice they're getting, they're slightly becoming closer to each other. Now look at this one. Here each cell is formed by turning not once, but turning in tenths, so a small, small turn. And as you keep doing that, you get this pattern. So again, they're, they're, they're getting closer together. And finally, if you turn just under two thirds, or you decimal buffs, it's 0 0.168, then you will get the following. Look how closely formed these cells are. And this number, or this amount of turn, is called the golden ratio. Now, what benefit does this have? Think about leaves, for example. These leaves are formed using that magic ratio. And this way, the older leaves don't get in the way of new leaves when the sun shines down on them. Also, when they are formed in this way, the maximum amount of rain gets directed down into the roots. So again, you see how nature is using this sequence naturally to help plants and flowers grow. There's another example of how these leaves are actually formed. OK, well, I hope that was useful. Um, it isn't November the 23rd today, but if it was, it would be an even better um, opportunity for me to do this assembly because November the 23rd is Fibonacci Day. Can anyone guess why it's November the 23rd? Well, I'm sure some of you have probably guessed it. Here's the reason why. Because you can write the 23rd of November in this shorthand format, and this shorthand format date uses the first four numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. Well, I hope you enjoyed that assembly. Uh, and next time you're out in nature, have a look. Do you see Fibonacci sequence happening? Okay, thank you and have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.